up, you guys? Marty Schwartz here from GuitarJams.com. I uh, had some requests for some more, you know, complicated soloing kind of lessons, you know. The more advanced players out there want it. I did it. I broke it down the best I could. We're going to zoom in, show you a bunch of licks. Keep in mind that you can take any of these licks and put them into your own arsenal. That's what all these guitar grades have done in the past, and I recommend you do it as well. Uh, I've got some more blues licks that you can add to your arsenal and versatility. Uh, a link right down there. Three signature style blues licks. Steve Ray Vaughan, Eric Clapton, BB King. Boom, right there. Totally free, no strings attached. But let's zoom in and break this one down right now. Here we go! All right, so this whole solo is in the C minor scale which has the C minor pentatonic underneath. Uh, there's lots of like little nuances that he changes up every time when you see him live. There's a lot of little characteristics that you can do. So I'm gonna just try and break down the actual notes, you know, of the phrases. And I think you kind of want to do it your own way a little bit, put your own style in there a little bit. So we've got this whole zone here based around C minor. So you've got the eighth fret is the root. We're gonna start on the eighth fret of the B to the high E. Then a whole step up from that high E. Eight, eight, 10, half step bend. Back down. Just like that. Back to that high E again. Then a real quick 11th fret on the B, you know, just right from that pentatonic kind of thing. And then we're gonna go to the eighth on the B, hammered up to the ninth on the B. Like that, so from the top. Now we're on the ninth fret of the B, and the next phrase starts on that note. So we go 9, 11, 8 on the high E. And then we hit it that high E again, and we're going to do a hammer on pull off on the 10th fret while we're holding down that 8th fret right there. I'll show you from the top. Next phrase starts right here. Then we're going to go real quick, and these are some of those little like, there's kind of like some ghost notes, a little bit of subtle things in there. It's going to be the 11th fret on the B. And then with ring finger on the 10th fret of the G, we're going to slide that up a whole step. And let's break it down from where that is. First phrase, second phrase. See that? So we went right there. See that? So that's the next phrase. It's going to start on the eighth fret of the B, eight, nine, eleven, slide up a whole step to thirteen. So that last little phrase, I'm pulling off from the nine to the eight on the B, then rolling over my index finger to the eighth fret of the G. 
and then hammering that up to the 10 of the G from that last phrase. There it is, watch again. And then there's this little lick that he changes up on the next time through, but it's a slide from the 10 to the 12 on the G, and then 8, 10. 12, 8, hammered to 10. Then the last phrase, before it starts over, starts on that note, the 10th of the G. Eight of the B, nine of the B, eleventh of the B, and back down. So all just scale tones. And then a little fill, which isn't really part of the melody. It's more of him kind of filling in between that very specific melody. Here's the melody, the head from the top, though, real slow. Last part. And so it's just kind of like a blues thing. Hammer on, pull off on that between the 8 and the 10 on the G. 10, 8. And then we're going to go down this extension scale, which I have lots of lessons on. Slide it with the ring from 10 to 8. Index fingers right there on the 6. That's just a great blues lick. Slide up to the 10 from the 8, and then immediately to the index on the 6. And then just ending on that root note, which is the 8th fret. All right, one more time in real time, one more time really slow, and then we'll move on. So the next phrase starts the same way. So he cha you know, he phrases, it's the same thing, but he phrases some things just a little differently. And like I said, when you see him live, each time it's going to be a little different. Even the takes he did in the studio, each one's at least a little different, I promise you. Because he's, you're an artist, you're creating and you're, you're letting it be a little bit spontaneous. And I do encourage that. I know, you know, like YouTube people, oh, the, you know, on the, on the um, at 426, he didn't slide his finger the right way. That's it. I'm unsubscribing, which is fine. But uh, that's not really how I do it. So the only thing different is the very last phrase. <laughs> So that's the only thing. So it's that everything's the same. We got the 10 on the G, 8 on the B, 9 on the B, 
11 on the B, back down, and then when you get to the 10 on the B on the way down, we're going to hammer on pull off, like that, back to that, the 10 on the G, but then back to the 8 on the B. So it looks like this. So that whole second phrase. Now it's going to change. That's the next phrase. 12 on the G, 13 on the B. Straight into a bend. You don't hear the note then bend, it's just right into that bend, which is the 13 on the high E bent up a whole step. So it's a first bend and then another bend. You hold it out and uh, there's probably, it's a super, you know, he's, the amp is super cranked because you get more sustain with like a Les Paul or a Paul Reed Smith. Uh, I've got the boogie back there. But if you crank it super loud, you tend to get, you know, you get more sustain because of the tubes inside the tube amp. Um, you can also use what's called a compressor and that gives you more sustain or a compressor sustainer. So he's holding the note out longer than most people can with like just a normal, you know, rig. I what I did was I just had two distortion pedals cranked to get that sustain just for that one part and then I went back toned it down for the rest. <laughs> So it's like a pull off and then a little bit of uh, a little bend up nuance. Oops, sorry. And here's another weird thing. 12, it's a it's a G minor arpeggio, G minor 7 arpeggio into that bend again. This is a great lick to add to a C minor kind of vibe. It's a 12th, you know, it looks like that. So it's the 12 on the G, 11 on the B, 10 on the high E, but they're, they're played separately, not as a chord. So boom, boom, boom. Then ring finger is going to do a a pull off while we're still holding that note right there. So that 13 on the high E gets bent again. So that's a two pull offs. Okay, here it is from that epic portion. So now there's some weird stuff. We're going to do just like that. Check it out again. So after we do, uh, we got to do a weird thing here where we're going to do this. We've got our ring finger on the 13 of the high E, index is planted behind it on the 11th and we're going to, so with one pick we pull this ring finger off and then slide that back. 
It's a good Santana style lick. Does the same thing an octave lower, but first it does a, another pull off from the 11 to the 10, then to the uh, 12 on the G. And then ring finger goes down a whole step to the 10 of the G, and you're gonna do that same move we did here. Okay, from the top of the epic portion. So then we're going to do a whole step bend on the 11 of the high E, back down, make sure you get to the 8th of the high E, not the 9th. I'm just using these three fingers here for strength of that note bending, but as soon as I finish that bend, I'm going to go right to that, not to that. And I'm just kind of pulling off down the pentatonic from there. rolls back to the 8 on the B, 8 on the G, roots again, 10th on the D, down that extension. Start with that. I hope it helps. It's a little trickier to teach that kind of stuff. It takes a lot more time. Uh, but even if you get some cool licks out of that, use it and put it into your own musical vocabulary. All right, that was the lesson. Hope you got something from it. I'll be working on a part two soon. I've got three more blues licks right down there that you can get. No problem. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I uh, hope to see you in another lesson real soon. Take care. <laughs>